A Perfect Maelstrom of Terribleness, How Calvinism and Social Justice Make Terrible Bedfellows, The Story of Matthew Hall, New VP of Southern Baptist Theological Sem- I mean, THE Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Coming up next with the Theosaurus Rex. Greetings all, it is I, the Theosaurus Rex. If you follow my podcast on Anchor.fm, you may have heard my commentary about a rebuttal to three assertions of racism, privilege, and diversity. If you haven't, you should totally listen to it. It's pretty good. It's done writing with Rex format, so it's it's live, all in one take, and the audio isn't great because I'm recording it on my drive home. However, I think it's definitely worth it. There's some good content there, I believe. And I may end up doing a an overall like kind of um, summary video on that later on. However... Some new news came out that I feel warrants a reply to this. And no, I'm I'm not going to be just focused on racial stuff. As a dinosaur, I can attest there is no such thing as race within our community. And I spoke about my channel intro. One of the reasons why I've been posting about it more is because I think this is a battleground that Christianity is fighting with gender and race. And a lot of the social justice warriors are using um, tactics against them that people who are who are on the front lines of the, the whole social justice warrior fight and everything that are used to, but a lot of people aren't, so they're being bullied into believing a lot of this stuff. As you may know, I graduated with my Master's of Divinity from New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, and one of our largest rivals is within the Southern Baptist kind of uh, college system is the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary with Mr. Albert Moeller. And he, as the president, has become kind of a Southern Baptist superstar due to his outspokenness on political and moral issues in the mainstream. His school has a cult of personality about him, and within Southern, the Southern Baptist community, there's pretty much a big uh, cult of personality about him as well. As an example, when I was taking my Baptist history class, we had to do a presentation based on a research paper of any person with an all of Baptist history, and Albert Moeller was chosen by 30% of the class all of which were Calvinists, but that's a whole other topic. Anyway, I say that the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary is a rival of NOBTS because they consider themselves the intellectual powerhouse of the SBC schools. The people look down on NOBTS because we don't have Albert Moeller, and the theological elite also look down on NOBTS because we aren't dogmatically for or against Calvinism, and both sides are allowed to be taught. And during the conservative resurgence, the time within the Southern Baptist Convention where they kicked out all the liberal theologians um, from their colleges and whatnot, the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary was the last holdout, and it would seem that they're the epicenter for the new wave of woke social justice or the progressive arm within the Southern Baptist Convention following um, a lot of the changes that have been happening. Right, from allowing racial trauma counseling on the campus for blacks who have been traumatized in white churches to hiring an admitted racist and white supremacist. What? What are you saying, Theosaurus Rex? Why, why would you make such accusations about that? Why well, don't just have accusations? Here's the video. It is a snippet that appears to be uncut. I can't find the full video, and I have tweeted the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary for comment for possibly either the full video of the context or if they have anything to say. But here you go. I have a pretty historic, and I think Pauline or biblical view of, of the power of sin. Mm. The problem is a lot worse than we think. Mm. Um, what I mean by that is both individually, like I am a racist. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so if that freaks you out, if, if you think the worst thing somebody can call you is a racist, then you're not thinking biblically. Because mm. guess what? I, I, I am, I'm going to struggle with racism and white supremacy until the day I die and get my glorified body mm. in, a re- in a completely renewed and sanctified mind. Wow. And that is pretty crazy. Uh, so from what I can tell, he's talking about the nature of sin. And coming from the Southern Baptist School Theological Seminary, he had to sign the abstract of principles, which means he's a Calvinist. And one of the things about Calvinism is that they find their identity in Christ, but also in their sin nature. They're very hyperly aware of how terrible humanity is and focus on it more so than any other identity they claim to have. To put it another way, they believe that we are sinners saved by grace, not saints who occasionally sin. Therefore, their identity is rooted in their old sinful life, not our redeemed state of being. And that's a whole other topic that I may probably will get into at a later time. 
To me, his statements are horrifying. My mom's side of the family, and my dad's side being from Washington State, didn't have the same issues, walked in the civil rights marches. They championed the cause of civil rights. My aunt had a KKK cross burnt in her front yard. Being a racist isn't just a word devoid of meaning that you call your political opponents to me. It's being a racist or any sort of racial supremacist has no place in Christianity. And if you're comfortable with it, and if you are resigned that you're always going to struggle with that, you have no business in ministry, especially not in a leadership position. Ah, uh, but dear, he, he's just admitting a sin that he has. How is that any different than a, a woman struggling with sexual sin or a man who is on drugs? And I'll admit, my lack of experience being a racist or a racial supremacist makes it difficult for me to empathize with that. But I can better understand the individual struggling with sin that's only a sin due to timing or situation, or another individual trying to medicate their pain away. I can't understand someone who would struggle thinking that they're better than other people just because of their race is different. I can even understand in some way, like a cultural or class supremacist, but not one based on racial or gender immutable traits. So how can the, the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary just let this pass? Well, I believe it's the embracing of woke slash SJW Christianity as they've done. Christianity intersectionally argues that we must identify ourselves not only as Christians, but also by our immutable traits as they help us to describe or identify our struggles. So the struggles of a black male Christian are different than that of a Hispanic female Christian, which are different than that of a white male Christian. While this can work in the political sphere within various secular ideologies, it forces us within the Christian sphere to reject the biblical truths that are stated. In Galatians 3.28, Paul states, There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ. Paul clearly lays out that our race, social status, gender, etc. doesn't matter. We are to see one another as Christians and only Christians. Now, the woke slash SJW camps also have the idea that whiteness is much like original sin. As a simple, just as a sample, just kind of Google or peruse Twitter under whiteness or Christianity, and it'll lead you into a rabbit hole you quickly wish that you would never journey down. Whiteness is seen not just as a lack of melanin, but as a sort of original sin that makes one responsible for all the actions of not only their ancestors, or if you don't have, like, slave-owning ancestors or whatever, then you have the guilt and um, shame of every person who shared that lack of melanin with you. And if you don't think you're a racist, then you're just in self-denial because even if you don't actively participate in it by existing in a society that is racist, then you're benefiting from it. Now, what happens is when you get a social justice warrior plus a Calvinist, and you get Calvinists who identify with their sins and don't believe they can be broke from it. And then other people who identify with their race and the sins committed by all of one race. You get that perfect maelstrom of terribleness. Where someone who claims to have a, Christ a relationship with Christ admits to being a racist and struggling with white supremacy until the day that they die. It's disgusting and it must be stopped. Thanks for listening. Check out my podcast if I double dip on topics. I'll name it the same thing. But each one's going to be different. I'm going to record them separately. Um, I'm going to maybe put in commentary I didn't in the other ones, etc. And follow me on Twitter at St. Theosaurus Rex. It's S-T Theosaurus Rex. And I will talk to you later. Thanks you all very much.